Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to do a video that I've been promising for a very long time and I have been super reluctant to do it. Uh, because, you know, sometimes you're on video and you say, oh yeah, I'll do this. And then you're like, now I got to do that. And you just, it's tugging at you, man. You don't, do you really want to do that? Let me tell you what the video is and then I'll tell you why. You might remember a while back, the control box on my lathe went out. I came onto the channel here, I showed you guys, and I asked for some advice, and I got so much wonderful advice from you guys that I was able to get this box working. And we plugged it in. You might have seen the video, turned the lathe on, it worked great. I made the promise that I would show you how to make my lathe reversible. And this is why it's been tugging at me. I don't want to do this as a how-to video, and that's the only kind of video I know how to do, but I don't want you to do this to your lathe because I don't want you to burn your lathe out. If you're going to make your lathe reversible, talk to an electrician, someone who knows electricity. I'm not an electrician. I don't deal with electricity unless you count plugging my phone in to charge it. I do not know about these things. I'm going by what I learned, and I learned this by watching YouTube videos, so I'm going to do what I saw in other videos. If it works, great. If it doesn't, no problem. But once again, I don't want you to do it because I did it, because I don't want to be responsible for you burning your lathe out. So if you elect to try this, it has nothing to do with my video. It's of your own free will, and the consequences will be yours and yours alone, as will the consequences of me doing this be mine and mine alone. Initially, what I thought I would do is remove the fuse and just maybe relocate it to the back of the box because, you know, fortunately you don't use that very often unless you overload the lathe and then you got to reset the fuse. And I would put the switch right here. Now, I decided against that and I decided against it because I didn't want to do a bunch of wiring inside the box. I watched a number of other YouTubers do this and the way they did it is they put their switch on, an, on a secondary box outside of this box, by doing that, it becomes modular, okay? I'm gonna show you what I mean in just a second. A couple of things that I'm gonna use for this project are, if you take a look at the back of your control box, you've got two outlets. This is AC in from your wall outlet, okay? This is DC out to your motor. That is very, very important. AC, alternating current. DC direct current. If you do not have a DC motor on your lathe, and there should be a label on there that will tell you that it's so many volts DC. If it says AC, you will burn your motor up, maybe cause a fire, and probably hurt yourself. Do not attempt this with an AC motor. Period. End of story. If you have a DC motor, it will tell you on there, DC, 120 volt DC motor. For example, that's important. Now, I showed you this because AC in, DC out. Your DC motor has a cord that plugs into here. I did not want to cut the cord on my DC motor. I just didn't want to take a chance at damaging it. So, let me show you what I bought. I went to my local electronics store and I bought this cable. It's a six foot, 18 gauge cable. That's important. My lathe has an 18 gauge cable on the AC side from the wall to the control box and it has an 18 gauge DC cable from the control box to the lathe motor. Now I mentioned I didn't want to cut my cable on my motor. That's what this is for. Take a look at this cable. It will literally plug into itself. It's the same two connectors that are on the back of your lathe. So this end can plug into the control box. I can cut this cable. I can wire it all up. This end will come out of the, the little switch box and I can plug my DC motor into this end and I don't have to cut the motor cable on my lathe motor. Extremely important. The next part of this project is the switch. And this is incredibly important. You want to have the right switch. Now, I mentioned earlier, I'm no electronics guy, so I got help specking this switch out. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the switch, but I'm actually going to read it off the packaging because I want to make sure that I explain it properly. This is a dual pole, dual throw, on off on switch. What that means is when the switch is in, in the center position, there is no power moving through the switch. Power comes in on the center two contacts. 
when the switch is in the up position, power goes out on the top two contacts. When the switch is in the bottom position, power goes out on the bottom two contacts. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little more about the switch in a second. Let me simplify this even farther. You've got two wires coming in to your switch, okay? They go out on the top and one wire is positive, the other wire is negative. With a DC motor, it's gonna spin, for example, clockwise. Now let's say you go out on the bottom two poles and you reverse those. So the top one's negative and the bottom one's positive. The DC motor is going to spin in reverse. A DC motor, the power, the way the power comes into the motor determines the direction of rotation of the motor. On my lathe motor, there is a placard that reads in big letters, and I'm gonna show it to you in a second, DC motor. A little below that, it reads three quarter horsepower, 120 volt AC. Now, that's the other information on this bag and the reason why I talked to my buddy to make sure I got the right switch. This is a three quarter horsepower and at 125 volts AC, it's a 20 amp switch. So this is rated the same as my motor and will work perfectly with my motor. If you take another look at the switch, you'll notice that the terminals all have little holes in them. Those holes are threaded, and this switch came with six screws, one for each terminal. While I was at the electronics store, I picked these terminals up, and I took the screws with me, so I made sure my screws fit perfectly through those, so I'll be able to screw them right onto the switch. These, because they're red, because they have a red casing, that tells me that this is rated for an 18 gauge wire. I wanted to make sure that all of my components across the board were compatible. The last thing I bought while I was at the electronics store was this little project box. And these are kind of neat. They're just little boxes. The lid will pop off and uses four screws to hold it on. And what I thought I would do is drill a couple of holes in the back for the inbound and outbound electrical cables to flow through. Drill a half inch hole in the front for the switch to be uh, poking through. And I can attach this to uh, maybe the side of my control box. And this will protect the connectors so that my hands or my tools do not come in contact with those components. This is a quick shot of the tag on the side of my lathe motor. Notice DC motor. If your motor says AC, do not attempt to make it reversible. It is impossible. Uh, this is a three quarter horsepower motor, 120 volts. And of course it tells the cycles, the RPMs, uh, the phase and the class. Now this is the information I shared with my buddy. I took a shot of this and I texted it over to him and asked him what switch I would need. And from this information, he was able to tell me uh, exactly the switch that I would need to work with this motor. I was looking for the perfect spot to mount my switch on my lathe. And initially, now you're looking at the back side of my lathe, I wanted to mount it to the left side of my control box. That way it's right next to the power switch and the variable speed knob. There's one issue and that issue is there are ribs on the left hand side of my control box that allow heat that is built up by the components inside of that box to escape. So I don't wanna block that at all. I wanna make sure that remains clear. So that means I'm gonna to have to mount it over here on the right side of my lathe. Now the issue is this is all cast iron. So drilling holes in it, yes, it could be done, but eh, I really don't wanna do that to my lathe. So I came up with another option. This is a magnet that I pulled out of an old hard drive and it has two screw holes. So I figure I can run a couple of screws with nuts into the back of my box. And this magnet, let me show you how powerful this thing is. It has a ton of power. It's a rare earth magnet. And if I stick it down here to the bottom of my lathe, it's going to stay there and it's going to hold very tight. So there we're going to mount the switch to the right side of the lathe. Knowing that I can now turn my attention to the six foot cable that I bought. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this and this is the power out to the DC motor. This is your AC in. This is the power coming into the lathe. I'm also going to unplug that, but just for safety's sake, and we're going to lay that out of the way. Now, on the cable I bought, this end is identical to the outbound end to the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. This end will plug into the motor. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the power come out of the control box. It'll go to my switch depending on the way my switch is up or down, that will 
determine the way the power goes out the outbound switch and to the motor. So we're going to pull these two switches, or these two cables, I'm sorry, over to the side of our lathe. And this is about where the box, the control box is going to be. So I know that if I cut these cables right here, they're going to be the proper length. Now I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit. I'm going to back up a tiny bit, give myself just a little, little slop. We're going to cut our cables. Now we're going to take these cables back over to the table. We're going to get them stripped and we're going to get them attached to our switch. Here's a quick shot of the cable ends after I cut them off. I went ahead and stripped the ends. I also cut about a three inch piece of cable off the remaining piece and I pulled the black and the white wires out of the jacket and I also stripped and soldered the ends of those cables. And the reason why I put solder on there is I'm ready to put my connectors on and when I'm dealing with stranded wire, you know, you go to put it in the connector and sometimes the wires will push back and they, you know, the stranded wires can be tough to work with. By putting a little solder on them and letting it melt between the strands, it holds them together. I can slide the connector right on, I can compress it and I'm gonna have a nice tight fit. So I'm gonna go get all of my connectors attached to my cable ends. I now have the terminal connectors crimped onto the ends of all of my cables. I did not crimp them onto the green ones. The green ones are ground and we're gonna end up putting those two together uh, inside of the box so that the ground can continue from the control box out to the motor. I've gone ahead and attached my magnet to the back of my box and I've run my cable. Now this will be the power out from the controller and I've run that through the bottom uh, hole in my box. This will be the way the box mounts to the side of the lathe. And it's not really important whether it goes to the top or the bottom. What's more important is the way it's wired. This is power in. So these two terminals have to go to the center terminals on our switch. With power in connected to the center terminals, I'm now gonna go ahead and connect my two jumpers to the bottom terminals. I've gone ahead and threaded the power out cable through the hole in the box, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect it up to the switch just like the other cables, white on one side, black on the other. But the difference is I've got my jumpers. I'm gonna bring the black jumper over and connect it with the white cable, and the white jumper over and connect it with the black cable. So the power will always be going out this cable, but depending on which way the switch is thrown, that will determine which of the, of the wires, black or white, is positive and which is negative. Hopefully you can see my wiring a little better. Uh, I've got power in coming to the center of the switch. That's your power in. Power out comes out of the top of the switch. So when I flip this up, the power goes out the top. No power can go out the bottom. When I flip this down, power comes out the bottom. No power can come out the top. However, since these switches are jumpered to the wires, power does go out the outbound cable. It's just in the reverse order that it was when the switch is in the up position. I've also taken just a wire nut and I have basically twisted together the two ground wires so ground carries from the controller out to the motor. Now I'm going to install this in the box. Here's a real quick view of the switch. It's all enclosed in the box. I've got the magnet on the back to stick it to the side. All I need is the nut. It's actually in there pretty tight but I'm going to go ahead and pick a nut up on my next trip to the big box store and we'll put that on there to keep that from moving. We're ready to take it over the lathe and test it out. I have the box mounted on the far end of my lathe and I have the switch in the center position. The way I've installed it is when I push the switch up, the lathe will go in reverse and when I push the switch down, the lathe will go forward. And I thought that made the most sense because if I drop a tool or something against this, it's probably going to knock the switch down, which is going to put the lathe in forward position, which is where I'll be using it probably 90% of the time. I've installed my buffing wheels because I thought this might be the easiest way for us to see the direction of the lathe. It's kind of tough uh, to see whether it's spinning forward or reverse otherwise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by turning power to the lathe on. I've got the variable speed set to as slow as it will go. I'm gonna reach over to the control box and I'm gonna push the switch down toward my table. And you can see that we are spinning in forward. Now I'm gonna put the switch back in the middle and I'm gonna pull the switch up toward the top of the box. And you can see that it's now spinning in reverse. So I have successfully reversed or successfully added a reverse option to my lathe. I'm really excited to have a reverse option available on my lathe. Uh, I look at it uh, as something that I'll be able to use 
uh, in sanding. It's going to be great because you lay the grain down one way as you cut it. By reversing the lathe, you're able to sand at the opposite direction that that grain is laying, which gives you a much smoother surface. Now, that's wonderful, but the other thing you have to keep in mind, this opens up a whole new can of worms. Let's say that you have a chuck on your lathe, and maybe you're turning a, a small box, and you decide, I'm going to reverse this lathe for sanding. If you reverse that lathe, that heavy chuck when you, is going to possibly loosen up and spin off of your lathe and could become a projectile. So now what I need to do before I can use any of my chucks, collar chucks or any of my pin jaws, anything, I need to now drill them out and put a set screw in them so that when I put them on the headstock, I can insert a set screw to keep them from coming off the lathe. So that's something to keep in mind if you have a reversible lathe is you always want to have uh, chucks and other accessories that have set screws to protect you uh, in the event that those come loose from the lathe. That's really all I've got to say about this. I've really, it's really been a super experience. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this was, this was one that was controversial for me, whether I wanted to put it out or not. But I have been just bombarded with requests to uh, show this video. So I decided to go ahead and do it. I really hope you enjoyed it. Once again, seek out the, the professionals before you do anything like this. They will guide you down the proper path, number one. Number two, if your lathe says AC, do not attempt this. You will hurt yourself and destroy your lathe. That is in double quotes because it's the truth. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.